Hey everybody, this month on Technical Tuesdays, I sat down with my friend, Raggy Horner. Raggy is the Managing Director of Futures Trading at Simpler Trading. In this episode, Raggy shares with us her favorite indicator, the grab candle. She created this indicator and is kind enough to share with us the recipe for coding it. Raggy explains how she gets an edge using grab candles, shares with us entry and exit techniques, how she determines her stops, and she gives us her thoughts on traders journaling their trades. Before you listen to the interview with Raggy, I want to mention the technical analysis guide done by RJO Futures. I have it downloaded on my desktop, and it's a great resource for the basics of technical analysis. So if you're interested in learning about the basics of technical analysis, or if you're like me and you like having a solid resource on your desktop, I highly recommend you download this free PDF located in the post on our website. So without further ado, let me take you right to the interview with Raggy. Raggy, what's your favorite technical analysis tool and why? I invented something I call the grab candle, G-R-A-B, uh, back in my teens, based upon uh, price relation to moving averages, and that is the touchstone for everything I do. What's the recipe for this indicator? It's really simple. It's it's really an elegant solution to a problem that I had, which was having a quick and reliable way to identify which one of the four Dow theory market cycles, market phases that we were in. And, and the recipe is basically this. Is price action trading above the 34 period exponential moving average on the high? Is it trading below the 34 period exponential moving average on the low? Or is it between them? And depending upon their relation, price's relation to these moving averages, the candle colors plot green, red, or blue. I love the simplicity of this, Raggy. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure you could probably build this on any platform out there that lets you build your own indicators. Absolutely. And I've actually, with the help of TradeStation, I believe TradingView and uh, Thinkorswim, there's a lot of platforms that offer the the code or the indicator for free. I've always made the, the recipe open, so there's nothing proprietary there. It should not be difficult for anybody to code that up themselves or find a free version out there on the interweb. You know, a question I get from a lot of traders out there is, Anthony, there's so many indicators out there. How did you know which one to use? Or do you think that I should go out and create my own indicators? What are your thoughts on that? The idea behind grab candles and one of the reasons I think everybody would benefit from having them regardless of their strategy is grab candles don't supplant anything you're already doing. It really won't work against anything you're doing because the whole idea here is that before you enter a trade to know what underlying market behavior or market phase that we're in really should be step one. It dictates the strategy. It dictates what indicators would work best for that strategy. So that was the problem that I was trying to solve because something like that simply did not occur. Up until that point in time, people relied on things like, well, a trending market is if the 20 crossed the 50, crosses the 100, crossed the 200. It was entirely too lagging. I needed something quicker. So if somebody out there says, you know, I, I have a problem and in the universe of indicators, I cannot find the solution. I absolutely encourage people to go out there, get in that trading cook kitchen and cook something up that they need for their trading. I completely agree. I, I, I could not find an indicator that fit the style that I wanted to uh, trade. So I went out and created my own indicator and really learning from what the basic indicators were out there and then just combining those thoughts and ideas um, and how I wanted it to, to look visually to me, I, I went ahead and did it. And this was just 15 years ago. And with technology nowadays, it's so simple. If you have an idea, uh, I, I strongly recommend you find a way to create it um, because to me, this is the that artistic aspect of trading that you know you don't have to live what the world has already given you. You, you could go out there and create something um, that, that fits you. I agree. You know, it's funny. I watch kids play with that uh, game Microsoft bought them. Mine something. Oh, gosh, it's totally 
drawing a blank, but they get to create their whole world, how they want things to work. I think we do this as kids and we somehow abandon that as adults. And that imagination, I think, is really a key component to trading that not enough emphasis is placed on. Yeah, I agree. So let's talk about your indicator. Um, did you back test this tool? I mean, how did you know that this was going to work for you? I think like a lot of things, you just kind of get an idea in the shower and think, oh, I'm going to test that when I dry off. That was re really it. It was a little bit of uh, encouragement from a student of mine that said, uh, Raggy, how do you understand the market's trending or not trending quicker than sort of the, the dogmatic and the established ways that we were doing this as traders, trend lines or moving average crosses, et cetera. And the idea came from the fact that I use, as, as a lot of people do, exponential moving averages set on Fibonacci numbers. So 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and so on. So my curiosity was if I were to put a single exponential moving average, but sort of bookended them with not just the close, but the high and low, what kind of footprint would that leave on the chart? And would it behave as dynamic support and resistance? And would it be quicker in identifying a trending versus non-trending market. So I back tested this Fibonacci series clear out to 1597 looking for that criteria, whether or not the angle of the moving averages and the color coding of the candles would clue me into accumulation, distribution, markup or markdown quicker than the way I had been doing it and 34.1. What do you believe your edge is using this tool? The edge for anybody who wants to start their trading, which I believe should be everybody, with understanding the underlying market trend, are we trending? Are we not trending? Is it consolidating? Is it congesting? You know, if I don't start there, there's no way I know what type of strategy to deploy. And I think that a lot of traders know this somehow in their heart of hearts or their brain of brains because they realize that sometimes their success to you know, losing ratio is sometimes 50-50, and yet they're executing their trades the exact same way. They're thinking, well, I'm, I'm executing it the same way I was when I was winning. What happened now? And what usually happens isn't an error in execution. It's an error in reading the market. So that strategy is probably perfectly fine. But now you, you've basically put a putter and you're, and you're getting ready to drive the, the, the ball off the tee. Great club, wrong one for the job. I love what you just said, and the the main reason why I love what you just said is because so many people talk about, oh, this market's in a bull market. Oh, this market's in a bear market. What you're saying is that your tool doesn't care what anybody says or what you think a market is in. It proves it to you. It visually gives me a cue where if I sat down, I'm a big fan of Richard, Fein, fan of Richard Feynman. He talks about if you can't teach what you do to a toddler – you know, I mean, I don't think I can teach a toddler how to trade, but a toddler can say, yeah, those are candles that are, you know, in, in the way I look at the market, those are green grab candles or those are red grab candles. I can take an absolute new trader and within a few minutes have them able to recognize uptrends, downtrends, choppy markets and consolidating markets. And it's those last two that I think are account killers. But yeah, if, if it's not that visually simple, I know that I'm going to have – I'll struggle. I want it to be objective and just visually clear. Walk us through an entry. So a typical entry would be first trying to find a market that has the organization of those colored candles, the grab candles, where I can identify a market's either choppy, consolidating, or trending. So a, a really great example right now would be the reflation trade that's on and what it's doing to crude oil – and uh, oil stocks. So a current entry on a daily time frame of crude, which is dominated by green grab candle. So you'll, you'll go back to, uh, you can go back to, gosh, uh, the beginning of the year. You can be back in you know, early January, and you'll see that throughout the year, once you have the grab candles on the chart, They've been dominantly green, a couple blue, which I consider neutral, but these bullish green candles. So what I do is when I get a pullback that sinks down into preferably the 34 EMA on the close, but it can be anywhere between the 34 EMA on the high to the 34 EMA on the low. But when we get a pullback like that, I'll buy. 
And since we've been plotting these green grab candles, I've had really two pockets, uh, one in February, one in March, where I could buy a pullback like that. And, and that's really one of the easiest ways that I teach people to trend follow. One of the first things I learned in this business is know where you're getting out before you're getting in, especially when it comes to the loss. How do you determine a stop? So if the validity of the trade is predicated on these candles remaining green or blue worst case, so they stay bullish green or neutral blue, if I get a red candle, that's my first visual cue that I've broken the threshold of the opposite side of these moving averages and a much more bearish sentiment, it's working its way in. So in the most rudimentary way, it really is for the upside. Green is go, red is stop, and it's all predicated on the price relationship to these moving averages. Once you're in this trade and it's going your way, how do you determine how you're going to exit this position? I love this question on so many levels because trend following is only really done at an elite level by traders who can get acknowledged that if you smother your trade, if you are too actively scaling out of a trade, it's going to be virtually impossible to be able to just get everything you can out of it. So one of the things I think a lot of us know, if it ain't fixed, if it ain't broken, don't don't fix it, leave it alone, right? Or uh, as I like to say, the 38 special school of trade management, hold on loosely, but don't let go. As long as those candles are green, as long as they're staying above the moving average, let's use that 34 EMA on the close, although you could look at the high and low bookending it as well. But as long as we remain in or above those moving averages, I want to leave the market alone. Now, there's one other tool that I'll recommend or, or one other strategy I'll recommend to be proactive about the first target. And that will be use an ATR or use a historical price movement range to at least have a target so that you can move a stop to a break even or a trailing. But other than that, especially for trend following, as long as they're green, leave the market alone. Can you walk us through a trade that you're currently in or did and just take us from entry, how you determined your stop and how you exited the trade or potentially going to exit this trade? Sure. Let's go back to that crude oil trade because I think it's so – um, so perfect an example of the reflation trade that's been on since the Powell pivot on Jan 4. Now, that's not to say this strategy isn't evergreen, but I think any time we have an accommodative central bank of any country, we have a reflation trade potentially on certain commodities like crude are going to benefit. So what I have in crude, going back to the beginning of, of January, was first a handful of green grab candles. That gets my attention. And now I've got a bias, and I think it's very important to have a directional bias. I don't want to be open to the trade going up or down. Uh, if I don't have an edge directionally, if I don't know if I'm supposed to drive my car north or south, I probably have no business pulling out of the driveway. That's the way I look at it. So the first thing is I have directional bias. The second thing is wait for the pullback. That's a big deal to me. Buying from the bottom of a range, waiting for a market that's climbing higher – we're probably that FOMO monkey in our heads are going crazy, but saying, look, healthy trends correct. What is a healthy correction? And that's going to be typically when I pull back, maybe plot a blue crab, grab candle, or I correct into that zone between the 34 EMA on the high to low. That happened uh, back on the – in crew that back, back on the 7th of February, the 8th of February, again on the 11th and the 12th and the 13th. So I, I emphasize that because sometimes these pullbacks and that, that correction could last a handful of days, giving us a really big window. Now contrast that to my most recent long entry in crude. So let's fast forward to March the 8th. That was one candle that sunk into those moving averages that remained green, but I had one candle on the 8th and the markets continued to take off. So I had one opportunity back in February where I got long, and then I had a second opportunity to get long on a trend-following pullback entry on the 8th. And you'll notice 
that each one of these sunk into the wave. It corrected lower into that zone between the 34 EMA on the high to 34 EMA on the low. This was the second opportunity. Now, unlike the one that happened in February where I had a window of five trading sessions, this was a single opportunity. So that day we sunk into the wave and then we've been rallying ever since. And this idea of buying on these corrections is very much the touchstone of what I do to trend follow. And you'll notice the entire year so far in crude has been dominated by these green grab candles showing us the bullishness, speckled with some blue showing us the corrections, and I continue to buy on these pullbacks. Last question for today, Raggy. You talked about how this is your favorite technical analysis tool, you walk us through an entry and exit, how you determine to stop. Are you journaling these trades along the way to help you with your execution? I write everything down like a 12-year-old girl in her diary. I write everything down. I write down if there was a particular news event that happened today that wobbled the psychology of the market. I've got a watch list that I transfer from day to day. I've got another column on my journal that has all the high and low ranges for every market that I'm in or want to be in. I have another part of the journal that talks about which candles, uh, which markets have predominantly green grab candles, red grab candles for downtrends or potentially choppy. So I, I keep a record of everything. And I think it's really important to do that with pen and paper. I'm a pen and paper girl. There's a lot to be said about uh, the, kinest, you know, the kinesthetic aspect of writing something down. And uh, so I write all this down. And I've got journals that go back to trades I was putting on when, when I was 15 years old. You know, this conversation has come up a lot lately on this show. And even when you and I were doing the, the live events over at Trade Station, pen to paper, it's not gone. It, it, there's that mind connection that we have that you just mentioned. Linda Rashke talks about it. I do it. You do it. Many other traders I know. Brent, who is on my Futures TV show, we all do it. And it really is amazing how when you put pen to paper, how you remember something better, you just have a better connection with it. And anything I do with journaling or writing notes, I don't put on the screens. Um, I, I write it down. It's so true. I think somebody told me a long time ago when I started doing personal journal journaling that a life worth living is a life worth recording. And trading is a big part of my life. It's my life's work. And absolutely, I couldn't imagine looking at a blank sheet of paper at the end of the trading day and not having a record of what I saw, why I did what I did, the levels that I was doing it from. I mean, I can do that. You know, when, like, for example, anytime there's a rollover in the market or something unusual, when 2008 happened, I went back to my trading journals of how I traded long-term capital management. So, you know, it, the, the notes are there. The path is there. I think it's really important to, to journal all of it. Raggy, where can people find you on Twitter and give us a website to check out? Sure. So I'm Raggy Horner, my first name, R-A-G-H-E-E, -E, Horner at, uh, at Twitter. And you can find me over at Simpler Trading. Dot com. I run the futures and forex service over there, and uh, that's where I spend my days. Raggy, you're the best. Thank you so much for joining me on Technical Tuesdays. I really appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for tuning in for Technical Tuesdays. Remember, if you're interested in learning more about the basics of technical analysis or a veteran like myself who likes to have a basic technical analysis guide for referencing, please download the free technical analysis guide on our website, under this Technical Tuesday post. Cheers, everybody.